Laura Ingalls Wilder ultimately felt limited by the constraints of nonfiction and turned to fiction when she wrote the Little House series. So what are the boundaries, expectations, and ethical considerations for writers working in the genre of memoir and autobiography? As we've seen, recreating believable dialogue is acceptable in the context of writing nonfiction. As Barrington again points out, who can remember the exact dialogue that took place at breakfast 40 years ago? And if you can make up dialogue, change the name and hair color of a character to protect the privacy of the living, as some memoirists do, reorder events to make the story work better, how is that different from fiction? Now, much of this makes sense, right? Changing a name or two to protect someone's privacy, changing the color of someone's hair. But wait, what did Barrington say here? Reordering events to tell a better story? But it doesn't stop here. Several memoirists believe it's absolutely acceptable to combine characters and create composites, compress several years into weeks or months, or even alter the outcome of events. To me, the truth of stories lies not in their factual precision, but in their emotional core. Most of the events in this book are honed and altered in some fashion to give them the curve of stories Lives don't usually correspond to narrative arcs, but all of these stories spring out of real people, memories, and joyously gathered and prepared meals. Now, many readers might find this description sounds more like fiction than nonfiction, and yet this particular book, The Language of Baklava, is marketed as memoir. Creating composite characters, changing story arcs, altering events to tell a better story. Many writers and critics would view this as a definition of fiction, not memoir. And that's exactly what Laura Ingalls Wilder herself did when she created the Little House series. But please remember, this issue is complex and open to many different interpretations. But because the boundaries are so shadowy now between autobiographical writing and fiction, and because it's long been recognized in publishing that a factual story generally sells better than a fictional one, there have been a flurry of publishing scandals around memoirs that go beyond the modifications that writers like Abu Jaber advocate. These are books published as memoirs, but are, in fact, complete fiction. For me, the classic example came from a prominent playwright I'd long admired, Lillian Hellman, and her critically acclaimed memoir, Pentimento, which was adapted into a haunting film, Julia, starring Jane Fonda and Vanessa Redgrave. The book was published in 1973, and the film came out four years later. The book sparked controversy when it was discovered that Hellman had, as one of her biographers describes it, not simply fictionalized her experience in the book, but had appropriated someone else's life. In fact, Wikipedia coined an expression to describe Pintamento. They called it a fictional memoir. Yes, a fictional memoir. And in a very public feud over the book that threatened a long legal battle, author and critic Mary McCarthy said of Hellman, every word she writes is a lie, including and and the. One of Hellman's biographers suggests that anyone who writes or studies her has to confront the fabrications in Hellman's memoirs. The issue of fictionalizing what's presented as autobiography or memoir continues to be highly controversial. Such recent books as James Frey's A Million Little Pieces sparked a major controversy after it was revealed that the book was fiction and not memoir. Oprah Winfrey had selected it for her book club and took Frey to task in a very public scolding on her television show in 2006 after the truth about the book surfaced. 
And then there's Margaret Seltzer's Love and Consequences, Memoir of Hope and Survival. The publisher of this book recalled all copies in 2008 when it was proven that this so-called memoir about a foster child growing up with gangs and drugs in Los Angeles was complete fiction. In both cases, the reading public felt deceived. So how much leeway should an author take when writing memoir or autobiography? Again to quote from Judith Barrington, applying fictional techniques to memoir should always be circumscribed by the facts. In memoir, the author stands behind her story saying to the world, this happened, this is true. What is important about this assertion is that it has an effect on the reader. He reads it, believing it to be a true story, which in turn requires the writer to be an unflinchingly reliable narrator. Wilder wasn't an entirely reliable narrator in Pioneer Girl, but of course it wasn't published during her lifetime or during Lane's. So neither were taken to task for the liberties taken with the facts of Wilder's life and her readers. What's important about Pioneer Girl, among other things, is that it served as a platform from which the Little House series sprang. It covers roughly the same period of time as the Little House novels, and Wilder drew on its characters, scenes, and settings when she began writing fiction. And while the Little House books are fictional, written in third person, not first, they illustrate the power behind what readers perceive as true story. Wilder and Lane promoted the novels as being absolutely true, perhaps because they both understood that what appears to be a true story often seems to resonate more deeply with readers than a fictional one. When Wilder spoke, at the Detroit Book Fair before the publication of On the Banks of Plum Creek. She told her audience, every story in this novel, all the circumstances, every incident is true. Yet, had Wilder been true to the facts, this book would have included the birth and death of her brother Freddie, the family's move to Iowa and experiences in Burr Oak running a hotel, and their return to Walnut Grove as town folk. But Wilder also knew that she was writing fiction and that truth in fiction is more slippery, circumscribed not by facts, but as Judith Barrington points out, what the reader will believe. Perhaps that's why Wilder added this line to her speech in Detroit. All I have told is true but it is not the whole truth.